This is it, a giant raised canal, or aqueduct. Currently the largest engineering project on Earth. The Chinese are constructing the aqueduct on site, piece by piece as they go, in separate 50 meter long sections. Each one starts off as a giant framework of steel rods. A team of 20 men build this bird nest like skeleton. And the whole structure is encased in concrete. Then it's ready to be moved into position with one of the world's most powerful cranes. Each section weighs 1,200 tons, more than three jumbo jets. The 25-year-old crane driver, Guang Afeng, isn't daunted by it all. I Building a man-made river across the landscape takes more than just brute force. Positioning the blocks is critical. The water has to flow north to Beijing of its own accord. There are no pumps. So Guang Afang has to set the gigantic block at the perfect gradient, just a centimetre lower at one end than the other. The aqueduct is so long, it won't be fully operational until 2030. When it's carrying water, millions in northern China will benefit. The need to move water to where people live has led to giant engineering projects across the world. But it's our need to feed ourselves that's really transformed the face of our planet. This is Bingham Mine. It produces enough ore each year to rewire every home in the USA and Mexico. It's the largest open pit mine in the world. The size of Bingham Canyon Mine continues to expand all the time. Today, we're about two and a half miles wide at our widest point, and we're nearly a mile deep at our deepest point. As we get bigger, we move back in about a thousand foot cuts. Um, those thousand foot cuts will take us seven years to get to ore, and we'll continue to mine ore after that to produce the copper that we need. Matt Lengerich is the operations manager in charge. The earth does provide for everything that we need. If it can't be grown, it, it has to be mined. Whether you look at the copper that's in your house in terms of wiring or your plumbing fixtures, your cell phone, hybrid cars, copper's essential to our way of life. This is low-grade Bingham Canyon mine ore. In this case, it's a limestone ore. The shiny spots that you see in there are pyrite material. The ore itself only contains a tiny amount of copper. So they have to dig up a lot of it to get enough of the pure metal. That's why Bingham Mine is so huge. We've been mining for over 100 years. We've made 19 million tons of copper in that time, and we've produced about 8 billion tons of material with machines just like these. Some seams of copper are so deep 
that they have to dig for seven years through waste rock just to reach them. Everything about the mine is massive. These giant trucks each weigh more than a jumbo jet and work round the clock to remove the rubble. I've been driving this truck for about seven years now. It's a good feeling driving these. It's, uh, it's pretty exciting. They burn about 100 gallons per hour when they're driving up the hill loaded. When you're up in these trucks driving, you don't realize how big things are. The, the mine wouldn't make any money if it, if it wasn't for the shovels, trucks, carrying the ore and the, the waste out of here. The giant diggers and trucks are just to take the rock away. The only way to get it out of the ground is with something a little more powerful. Three blasts a day and 100 years of mining has created the largest excavation in human history. Engineers have begun work on a new super sewer, but until it's ready, professional scuba diver Julio has one of Mexico's dirtiest jobs. Several pumping stations like this one force Mexico City's sewage uphill and out of the city. But the pumps get blocked up so regularly. Julio and his team are forced to dive in the raw sewage, unblocking the pipes by hand. Teníamos hasta 11 buzos, pero todos se han retirado, no han querido seguir trabajando y se han cambiado de lugar. The lack of applicants reflects the dangerous and vile nature of the job. El trabajo es peligroso sí porque no vemos, no sabemos qué nos vamos a encontrar abajo, entonces tenemos que hacerlo con mucho cuidado. Julio's job today is to inspect one of the giant pumps that keep sewage moving out of the city. Mexico City dumps all of its liquid waste from industry, homes, even hospitals into a single sewer. And the huge sewage pumps regularly become blocked. Diving in some of the most toxic sewage in the world can bring some rather unexpected encounters. Today, the problem is no less than a horse's head. The growing world population has created huge new global markets. The only way to get goods where they need to go is in some of the largest vehicles on the planet. Container ships. To construct one of the biggest ships in the world, you need a workforce of 50,000.
buckets of molten metal heated to over 1,000 degrees centigrade. Tens of thousands of tons of steel per ship. And engines the size of houses. The biggest engine of our shop, the power of the engine is more than 100,000 horsepower. Power of the motor car is about 100 horsepower. The scale of the effort is hard to take in. It takes the mother of all cranes to put the big pieces together, capable of lifting 1,300 tons. Ju Sung Jong is the crane operator. 27 years experience puts him on the A-list of crane drivers. He picks up pieces of ship the size of buildings and puts them in place with millimeter precision. 어려울 때는 이제 좀뭐 바람이 불거나 뭐 안개가 끼었을 때뭐 그럴 때가 조금 작업하는데 어려움이 있습니다. The finished ship rises more than 50 meters from its keel, is three times longer than a football field, and able to hold 13,000 shipping containers. This one single ship is extraordinary by itself, but in this shipyard alone, they are turning out approximately 100 of these a year. That's almost one mega ship every three days. With such big ships, the problem becomes how to load and unload them. Just 40 years ago, it used to take 100 men over a week. Today, it can be done in just a matter of hours. The reason is the shipping container. Boxes that are all the same are easy to get on and off ships. Our plane can handle 35 container boxes in an hour. We have 12 ship-to-shore crane. That means we can hand 400 container boxes in an hour. Allowing ports to move them in their millions. Busan is the fifth largest port in the world. Uh, in a year, about 14 million container boxes were handled in Busan. Everyone knows it as the tube. It's 8 a.m. This is when the city really starts to move. In the next few hours, over half a million people will be going to work. The morning rush is when the system is pushed to the max. For the most part, all these journeys are invisible. But imagine what you'd see if the London Underground ran above the ground. In central London, some lines run so deep that if they were above ground, they'd be 10 stories high. We take it for granted. Nonetheless, every day, over 500 trains, running on 250 miles of track, move nearly 3 million people. London is the oldest subway system in the world. The busiest system can be found in the world's most populous city, Tokyo. The number of riders dwarfs all others. Over 
All those commuters add up to 8 million people crisscrossing the city below the ground every day. That's an astonishing 3 billion journeys a year. To get that many people from A to B efficiently, on every platform, there are 25 officials, like Yuhei Tsuhashi to manage the flow smoothly. The trains are not allowed to run late, even if occasionally the commuters do. Here, the underground system is expected to work like clockwork.